I'm proud to be on the House floor with every one of you, with family members, and accept this nomination today to serve as your Speaker of the House for a second time. First of all, congratulations to all of our new members who are here with us today. It's an honor that you're here. The voters of your district have sent you here. But I also think it's important to recognize other folks that don't get recognized formally, and that's the family members who are with you right here, the folks who are there with you when you're making the tough decisions, when you're dealing with campaigns and all these, these things. I would ask my colleagues, I think we owe our family members a debt of gratitude. I think we ought to stand and congratulate them for all they do for us. For our returning members and for our new members, congratulations. Wish you the best. It's a, a, uh, uh, this building sometimes is a little hard to get around. It may take a while to find, find ways, but you will do that. And I know each of you are going to be very effective for your own districts. Let me say this before getting into too many of the prepared remarks. This first day of session is always one of almost exhilaration. It's an opportunity that we all have to serve our fellow citizens. Of this state of roughly 9 million people, the 120 of us in this room have been sent here to make decisions in this House chamber to make this state a little bit better. I can tell you that my words cannot express the gratitude I have to the folks in my district, just like each of you in your district, for the opportunity to serve, and certainly cannot express the gratitude I have to each of you to serve as your speaker again. You know, North Carolina is, is such a special state, not only to us, uh, in our own hearts, in our own minds, as natives and residents, but also in the history books of this great nation. What's special about North Carolina? I'd say just about everything. Our landscape is breathtaking, from the beaches of our coast to the mountains in the west. North Carolina is a top 10 state for tourism, year after year, because of the abundance of our natural resources, our rich history, and our cultural resources. People come from all around the world to drive our mountain parkways to visit our, and to visit our Outer Banks, where the Wright brothers first took flight. Our state is full of a multitude of historic treasures, like my hometown of Kings Mountain, which was a turning point for determined patriots seeking independence in the American Revolution. So much of our state's culture and identity is rooted in agriculture. We have the finest farms, not just in the southeast, but in the entire world. Our culture in this 21st century is also defined by a world-class art museum and other outstanding museums and attractions, often referred to as the Smithsonian of the, of the South. We are indeed honored to live in the greatest state in our great nation. Now, as we gather here today, I hope you join me in being so proud of North Carolina. I'm proud that our state is on a solid financial footing, thanks, frankly, in large part to the hard work of this House. We are one of the fastest growing states in the nation and poised to continue creating jobs in so many key uh, sectors like you know, commerce, like finance, information technology, and medical research, among many others. While sustaining our small businesses with tax relief and regulatory reform, North Carolina is also cultivating core industries that can sustain investment in our rapidly changing economy. As Representative Setzer said, thousands, thousands of new jobs are being created in North Carolina every month, with very broad growth among small businesses and large corporations alike. We have world-class universities in every direction, from here in Raleigh, where some of the smartest inventors and researchers come here to learn, to teach, to research, and to develop, because we offer a higher education of the highest quality. North Carolina continues to serve as an epicenter for commercial activity. Global technology companies have created a world-class hub for innovations right here in North Carolina, and their innovations are changing lives around the world. I was at the RTP just a few weeks ago hearing of some dr drugs being developed right now to, to cure some of the you know, diseases that continue to ravage our country, uh, everything from Alzheimer's, and it, where we're on the cutting edge. And it, doesn't it make you proud as a North Carolinian to know the work that's happening to develop those drugs is happening only a few miles down the road? 
That's due in large part to the investment this state has made. And what this all means is that we now have an immense responsibility to our fellow North Carolinians. We are called to serve them. And there is no greater honor than serving. As Jesus said, the greatest among you will be the servant. So let us have a servant's heart throughout this biennium. We will not always agree, but let us, agree, let us disagree respectfully and with kindness. You know, it seems to be that North Carolina has always existed with a little rivalry, and yes, even some division, but in the end, there's always much more that unites us. There are rivalries east and west, different basketball teams, competing NASCAR drivers, political parties, you know what, and even different types of barbecue. But in the end, we are all North Carolinians. In the end, we have goals for our state that are much more alike than they are different. We want job creation and growth. There are so many things that make our state attractive to new businesses and relocating businesses. We certainly need to continue to make necessary reforms to continue producing even more jobs. Citizens in the private sector are driving investments that have put more people to work and grown our tax base. To keep growing, we must maintain our commitments to tax reform and relief, pass balanced budgets, and cultivate a workforce that is career ready and educated in an increasingly innovative world. It is critical that North Carolina continue to develop a diverse economy to attract investment and remain competitive. It's my priority to work with each one of you to make North Carolina the most competitive and prosperous, prosperous state economy in the nation. Further, our state needs a dynamic education system that serves students with the tools they need to lead North Carolina into the next decade. We must work together to help our students achieve our school systems, achieve, excuse me, and our school systems, community colleges, universities, charter schools, succeed at every level in a new era for education in North Carolina. And thanks to our commitment to the hardworking educators, first year teachers in North Carolina will at long last make at least $35,000 a year. And we continue to work to bring the average teacher pay up around the state. And we made great strides these past two years. Finally, we have a duty to conduct our government in the responsible and prudent manner in which families and businesses manage their own finances. Plan, plan for unseen events and prepare for times of need. In this last budget, we prepared, we had a rainy day fund. Aren't we glad we had a rainy, done, rainy day fund with what happened this fall with the floods that ravaged Eastern North Carolina? Members, we will soon face important decisions that affect the financial security of the public decisions that will influence the future of our state. Issues requiring us to weigh choices that impact the economic vitality of our great state and the protection of our citizens will come before us. I pledge to you, members and citizens of North Carolina, we will make those decisions together in good faith with the priorities of our people put first. I promise to continue being a speaker who empowers you to represent your district as only you can. Whether your constituents live in one of our major cities, one of our historic small towns, or in the rural splendor of our state. I promise to work with you to give North Carolinians, from Manio to Murphy, from Cherokee to Swan Quarter, the representation they deserve right here in Raleigh. Thank you again, members and distinguished guests, for a meaningful and very special opening day of the 2017 legislative session of the North Carolina House of Representatives. God bless you, and may God, bless, may God continue to bless our beloved state of North Carolina. Thank you.